Welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of Booking the Territory, the Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast. Where today we're talking NWA Saturday night on TBS from April the 21st of 1990. We finally got past that three hour venture in the last two weeks. I am sitting here with Doc and not Hard Body Hopper, who, although he's on the internet playing around on Facebook and Instagram these days, he's still not back in his hometown to where he's got a good place to record this thing. And I understand completely. So, as I said last week, We'll see when he has when he can come back. But Doc, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. But I have a feeling we're gonna once again challenge the BTT North American record for fastest episode run through ever. I don't know about that. You know, you'll get your flips and dives in, and before you know it, it'll be the same as every week's episodes. Well, speaking of that, I have a question because you know I'm not out there on social media, which, by the way, I win. But anyway, I've been thinking a lot about the broads of BTT. Okay. Are you talking about you said our the, wives or? No, no, no. The listener broads. Why you got to call them broads? Well, I'm pretty. that's kind of uh, to my point. I'm pretty sure that if they're listening to this show, there are going to be okay, uh, continual listeners. They're going to be okay with getting called broads. It's like a term of respect. I don't know about that, but whatever you say, pal. You seem real woke tonight. Um, (laughs) Uh, I was just wondering what kind of dirty, down, dirty, bottom (laughs) leads a female to listen to this show on the regular. Mm. I mean, we're a bunch of dickhead jackasses. I mean, that's not sorry motherfuckers. I mean... You know, why does everybody get caught up in things? Well, I think uh, not to toot our own horn, but toot toot. I think we're entertaining in our own special way. And for the people that like that sort of thing, that's the sort of thing those people like. And that's our group. That's our fans. That's our listeners. And I don't see nothing wrong with that. I'm just wondering if the girls that listen to this show are i feel like we would need to protect them from rated x when that comes back what do you think rated x what are you talking about what's the wildcat show x rated x rated yeah i believe in the next one you there may be a couple of the uh wildcat ladies that will will show up or the btt ladies Lady. that will show up ladies yeah that'll show up to the, to the show I, look, man, you can you can keep on behind no behind a mask and nobody knowing who you are, calling people. I ain't going there, pal. All right. All right. Well, when this comes out, we're gonna. So I need to catch everybody up here. Mike is. Mike made me do some sort of Cowboys art project last week, but the Cowboys haven't played game one yet. That's not true. You were celebrating the touchdowns last week. C.D. Lamb, Dak was slinging a ball all around the field. The Cowboys were matriculate, matriculating the ball down the field, boys. And you were all giddy last week when you were on your way to one and know what happened. What? Well, I want to know what's going to happen to you in Jacksonville. I will, don't know. Will the Will the National Football League put their finger on the scales, just like they did the only time y'all won the Super Bowl? You know, it's funny. There's like a tropical depression or area of low pressure in the Gulf. (laughs) And they were worried by the time this airs, it would have all materialized. But about five days ago, they were worried that it was going to come off the Yucatan Peninsula and maybe head towards New Orleans, maybe develop. As of today, with us recording it, it hasn't really developed much, but, you know, it would bring a lot of rain. But from what I saw, it's now heading towards that, you know, towards Florida, the Florida coast. Which would cause a lot of rain in Jacksonville, which is kind of funny, which actually, by the time this airs, I actually wouldn't mind some rain because anything to throw off your favorite quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, right, is right. fine by that me. That might actually give y'all uh, an advantage. Yeah, whatever. We'll see. <laughs> Have you guys ever considered down there in the bayou that maybe that's not the place God wants y'all to live? <laughs> now, now you sound like a certain politician after Katrina hit. I'll tell you what, pal. You abandon the port of New Orleans and you see how good it works out for America as a whole. And that's my only comment about that. 
No, no, I love New Orleans. You know that about me. I love. You don't visiting. get. You do not get anybody who makes statements like that. You're joking. But there are people who legitimately make crazy statements. Well, I don't I, know why those people live there, bro. Abandon the poor I, New Orleans I, and see what happens in build, America. What kind of idiots build a city below sea level? Anyway, long well, live New Orleans. Sure, whatever you say. Hey, real well, quick. Well, hey, Harper ain't even, we miss him, and we hope he's back soon, but he's not even in New Orleans. As of us recording this, he's not, no. He's, he's, he's like he's, all those rich people. When the shit goes down, he's out of town. <laughs> sure. He's on, the Harper, he's on the Harper Hershey Highway out of town. Special shout out to our largest page contributors monthly, disrespectfully, Classy Marky Blassie, Mike Childry, and Joe Weiss. Thank you for your generous patronage each and every month and while i'm on the patreon thing i want to also mention a couple of new patrons john s aaron m antonio p and jose g thanks for becoming new patrons and also aaron thank you you went annual uh, which is a great thing so you pay up for the year and you get an extra month for free when you go annual so thank you very much aaron but i want to thank all those patrons and our largest page contributors monthly doc we got some serious stuff we got to talk about here real quick before we get into the main show uh, did you want to go there next, or you want me to go with the five star review? What do you want me to go with? Um, maybe you should do the bad news first, and then that way the the five star review will pick us up. How about that? Sure. So first, uh, I got a couple of RIPs that I need to mention. One of them, and by the time you hear this, it'll be a week and a half has gone by. But a long time, I'll call him. Um, uh, Twitter, a Twitter friend, longtime Twitter friend, Seth Hansen, who would always post all kinds of old wrestling newspaper clippings because he had a subscription to newspapers.com. You've probably heard Cornette talk about him on his show before. Anyway, Seth would always post old cards, cl newspaper clippings. It was just like a treasure trove of basically the old days. And what's more amazing about that is Seth. He was only like 37 years old. So, you know, within the last six years that I had seen him online, he was posting those things, you know, as back when he was a 30 year old, 31 year old. So anyway, Seth passed away. I, I know he had some health problems for, for years now, but, uh, you know, 37, way too young, uh, just way too young. And Doc, I'm going to throw it to you if you've got anything. But I also wanted to mention my goddaughter's aunt passed away. She was around Doc and I's age uh, last weekend. She passed, and I, let me tell you, man, this is why I always say it. When, when people who are older pass away, I say, be sad, but they had, a, they had a great life, like a Bullet Bob Armstrong. No one wants to ever see Bullet Bob pass away, but he lived a long life, an accomplished life, did a lot of great things with his life. When I see 30-year-olds and 40-year-olds <clears throat> die, it brings me down a bunch of notches. So I got to say RIP Seth, uh, you know, uh, thanks for sharing all the stuff you shared on Twitter over the years, man. Didn't you have another RIP? Yeah. So this one, um, when I first started in the outlaw mud show arenas, as we like to joke about on here and was on the indie wrestling scene in the mid nineties, I met a gentleman by the name of uh, Big Richard Bailey. And when I say big, Richard was a big dude. Big old corn fred, cornbread, just big old man, mountain of a man. Matter of fact, one of his gimmicks was mountain man. Uh, Richard was like, uh, someone will correct me out there that knows him, Tommy Cyrus, the guys I've talked to about him this week. Uh, Richard probably had to be a good 6'9". Big dude, probably 380 pounds with ease. Anyway, so I remember seeing Richard on the indie scene, and one of the first cards I was on, I got to meet Richard. And he terrified me because he was so big, but just a big old teddy bear, just the nicest dude. And he used to run his own shows in Alabama, and he booked me and, and a friend of mine a handful of times on his own shows in Alabama, brought us in. I remember one time Richard called me out the blue. Now, I met him late 95, early 96. He calls me out the blue in like 2000 or so, and I hadn't seen him in a couple of years. 
but he had my phone number. And I pick up the phone and, you know, got, the, got that old Alabama country accent. Asked for me. Say, hey. He goes, uh, you still working? I was like, yeah, uh, sure. He goes, uh, what about Jerome? I say, yeah, Bishop's still working too. Y'all want to come work for me? Sure. And he said, man, you know the funniest part of this conversation, Mike? I said, what's that, Richard? He said, most times when you call a wrestler after a couple of years, the number's either disconnected or it's changed. So that's probably the most amazing thing. So anyway, uh, Big Richard was just a real nice guy. Like I said, a mountain of a man. He worked on. He worked a bunch of different gimmicks down in in the Southern Indies. Uh, there were the first show I was ever on with him. He was actually Lord Humongous. Now he wasn't Lord Humongous in the Mid South days, uh, Memphis days, and all that. But he did a Lord Humongous gimmick, and he was big enough to pull it off. That's how huge he was. But he also did. He called. There was a gimmick he did called the Mighty Crane. Um, and like I said, mountain man. And I, I think he may have done a, done a few others as well, but anyway, RIP big Richard Bailey, really good dude gone too soon. Um, wasn't, I mean, he was older than me, but it, when I say gone too soon, I mean, he wasn't like in his seventies or eighties and you know, just, I hate when good people die before their time. What about bad um, people? Well, if you're a child molester, like a, you know, a Grizzly Smith or something, and um, like I said, <laughs> sarcastically, thoughts and prayers, I hope you suffered. Anyway, um, but a guy like Big Richard, real good dude, like I said, just a nice man, gentleman, a gentleman, um, really good dude, man. I, I, I just hate to see guys like him pass away when, when they don't have to. And he had, he had, had some, um, some health issues. Uh, over the years, because he was a big man, but um, his wife had passed away a few years back, and she died young. So I know that wasn't easy on him, but I know he left some kids behind, and uh, you know, it, it just you you hate to see it. A real good dude. So, R.I.P. Big Richard, man. Uh, yeah, we gonna miss you, man. You're a good dude. All right. Well, why don't you bring the room back up after making everybody feel sad for a little bit? Uh, you, you said we have some shout outs, some five star review action. So we got one and I believe he's written one on iTunes before. So I have to mention that. But we got one from uh, Tony Montana, 42, 42, a longtime patron. Uh, Tony says this podcast is way more than just another wrestling podcast. It is a way of life for many, an institution, an icon and at its and it is the best thing going today. Woo! <laughs> the hosts know their stuff. Mike Mills, Hardbody Harper, and Doc Turner are like three friends you've known your entire life that you can actually have fun with as if you were at a bar or a backyard cookout. If old school wrestling, good promo, smack talk, and not always having to be PC or up your alley, this is the place for you. And boy, Harper and Doc sure know about not being politically correct on this show. What is that after? What do you... <laughs> Come on. It's the I, here's the thing that here's head. the thing shut up. Here's the thing I think a lot of people don't understand. Either that or it's funnier to keep up the mystery. But I think you have confused many, many people about our friendship. Okay. Well, I think, you know, you come in here and like, you're an asshole, blah 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 blah. But let's let's crack that open. If that was truly the case, why would we still be doing this six years later? And you're like, we were talking the other day. Why would you? It, it just doesn't make any sense. It's not a plausible storyline. We're best buddies, just like everybody out there knows. And uh, I'm just ready to crack in and uh, really have some uh, good time fellowship on this show. Boy, that that's that's what you got. That's you're just Sherlock Holmes there with that bit of information like you just broke the freaking case wide open i could have got away with it if it weren't for you meddling kids <laughs> okay hey um i'm reading a story right here doc before we get into the show it says cowboys linebacker leighton vander Esch is pumped to face the buccaneers qb tom brady for the first time he's gonna break <laughs> his collarbone as well as he's about to, he better worry about it he better worry about not getting injured He's going to bounce off of him and lay in the ground in a crumpled heap. Oh, my God. Let me, so 
I haven't heard any more about our team from last week, the uh, Murder, Inc., or whatever that high school is. Have you heard any more about these guys? No, nothing. Not since I went online and looked at their Twitter account, which if you give me a second, I can I can look it up to see if they're... If they, they're look st- like they got out of town just before everybody figured it out. I'm trying to see. I'm going to their Twitter. I want to see if they're still looking for opponents. Hold on. I'm glad you asked that because I, I didn't I'm intend to. I'm telling you, man, we could get B- BTT's 11 finest and head down there. You know what I mean? So... Their last tweet seeking an opponent was September 1st, so that is a week ago from us recording so while this. So we were on the air last time was the last time they surfaced out from the the, the gutter to... All right. Well, let me, let me also state that as of September the 8th, they did retweet Chad Henning. <laughs> and chad henning said all blocking is one with your feet not your arms slash upper body never ever forget that so they're retweeting uh people here within the last day as of us recording this but they they seem to be not seeking opponents at this moment maybe that's a good thing <laughs> in any battle it's the man who's willing to die for that inch that is one of the greatest speeches in cinema history you Al Pacino, he is you know, phenomenal. I've done everything I could possibly do to fuck up my life. That speech is tremendous. Me and a buddy of mine used to quote that speech on a regular. <laughs> like, that's how good that was from any given Sunday. That's what it sounded like. His Are you going to claw with your brother team, for that inch? that inch? On this team, we fight for that inch. It was inspirational, man. That dude had me ready to go run through a wall after I saw that. I was like, this is great. He got he got Steam and Willie Beeman to play team ball. It was tremendous. What a what a, I mean, seriously. What I a speech. Made more mistakes. Anyway. He's probably coaching that high school team. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we'll show anybody fun. your transcripts it would be and funny. deny everything. It'd be funny if you actually had a coach who basically recited that whole thing to his high school team or even college team, which would have been not have been born yet or too young to even have seen it. <laughs> and they had no clue. That'd be great. Tremendous. I, I, I speech. bet you I've seen any given Sunday 25 times. I haven't seen it 25 times, but but I've I watched it quite a few times when it came out. You know, back then we didn't have the streaming services we have now and YouTube was in its infancy. So we weren't we weren't watching things the way we watch them now. So when you had something like that, either on, well, I was going to say either on tape or definitely wasn't DVR. But there's the director's cut where they have Bill Bellamy and LL Cool J doing coke off a titty in a bathroom at that party. I think I've seen that. But I didn't realize that was director's cut. I thought that I thought that was on the main one. I think it was the director's cut. That shit always made me giggle when Lawrence Taylor cut his car in half. Oh, I was thinking about that the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that was not realistic because he had a chainsaw. <laughs> like, dude, you're not gonna cut. <laughs> We're getting ready to talk about 1990 WCW. What part does realistic have to do with the damn thing? Yeah, you got a point. Hold on one second. I'm gonna get the video version going. But the first thing I gotta do is I gotta share my uh, share my screen with you. Uh, sharing is so, caring. So you let me know when you can see it, and then I'm. I can see start. it, buddy. Look at all of that action in the ring. All right, so I got the video version going now. We're talking April twenty first, nineteen ninety. We finally got past that long three hour episode, which the second half was a hundred times better than the first. If we're gonna be frank, the show opens up. We got the Horseman uh, attacking Lex Luger in the ring. Um, we hear a familiar uh, familiar voice on commentary during the opening uh, plugging the castro oil. It is Tony Schiavone. We don't see him yet, but he appears to be back, at least in the commercial plug, that is. And then we, Cornette tells us we are at the Barton Coliseum this week in Little Rock, Arkansas. That's an old Mid-South building in town. And Corny mentions last week that he almost got killed with Luger and Horseman uh, in the Horseman brawling in the ring. As he was wrapping up his interview with Flair and Woman, which uh, you just saw the replay. 
Uh, Doc, any thoughts on the opening before we go to the first matchup? How great is it to have Tony back in the stable? I feel like he needs to hear this nonsense, too. You know, it's great that Shivani came back, but also now that we know the story, when you hear him tell it, he's like been back for a week whenever he's back and he's calling up north wanting to go back and Vince McMahon's telling him, no, you said you wanted to be back in the south with your family and basically Vince told him thanks but no thanks. So anyway, he's back, but he's told the story a million times. He wasn't happy to be back. For, for long like he came back and knew immediately I made a mistake but it is great to hear his voice to answer your question he's Tony Schiavone he's not a WWF guy would you agree not he's just not yeah it's just even if you go watch any of the stuff he did there and you listen to him on commentary it's one of those things where you it's almost like you're in an alternate reality because he it just doesn't it's it's just not right. It there's it just doesn't fit. It's not him. He belongs in a Southern wrestling promotion. Any other? Yeah. Thoughts, no, I mean he's Jim Crockett Promotions, pal. Let me in in the guy we're watching right here, not Cornette, Jim Ross. Him too. Like I know he's synonymous with Raw in. Once he leaves here and all the work he did in WWE and how rich he got there. But there's so many people who grew up on that era and that era alone that don't realize Jim Ross was a hell of a commentator in WCW before going up north. He and was a hell of a commentator. WCW. Yep. He was great. Well, actually, I think he he's he does a hell of a job when he's here, uh, at, you know, after he stabs rocket in the back no, i'm joking whoa it's a joke, whoa, whoa whoa <laughs> sir I, I i love jr uh but now, you ever, have you ever did you ever wrestle in little rock arkansas arkansas yes not little rock not little rock um i i'm of the opinion that arkansas gets a bad rap okay you'll have to explain well i've been to i've partied in uh arkansas before and uh, while I know that sounds like it would be a setup for a joke, I've always found the people to be very nice, and I've always had a really good time. I mean, I used to have fun wrestling there in the small towns I was in, but I haven't necessarily been everywhere in the state to see what it's like. But, yeah, I mean, I guess it's okay. Makes me think that maybe I was a little too harsh on uh, all those Smoky Mountain people. Wow. Uh, I, think I, I think they're still listening so, so I could apologize to them. Uh, not a chance. Well, some of them might be like uh, well, what's Riley that one Arnwine. guy that listen to us. Riley Arnwine, uh, he still listens. Okay, uh, well there I, you I go. Think... I, I, kudos on your downtrodden yet wonderful area. He's an attorney. I don't think he's a. Uh... Oh, he's got a full docket of meth cases to be sure. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Let's keep moving. Oh, you don't forget our, 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 our BTT judge. He's also, he's also in the smoky. So, I mean, you know, as you're making fun of people because you're all high and mighty with that PhD. Uh, no, I, I, I respect the law. You know, that's what I'm saying. You hey, should. Hey, you know what? As the recent conversation that we had, that's been setting the airwaves on fire, me and Blassie that we had, when, when you come in knowledgeable, there's a nothing but respectful conversations to be had. Agreed. Let's keep going with this show. So the first thing we do is we go to a clip of Eddie Gilbert versus Samu from NWA main event. JR throws us to that. To that. Um, he says this is the last time they wrestled. That match ended up with both guys going over the top rope. And Nick Patrick, who was the referee, says time expired and it's a draw. Uh, remember Gilbert got nailed with the pineapple a few weeks back in the back of the head by Samu. So there's, there's where your bad blood is. We go from that immediately to the present Matt, present day, uh, which is Eddie Gilbert versus Samu again, which we've seen now, uh, once before, twice with that clip. And this Samu is like has, the new Orton and Cena, pal. Man, th th this is, 
yes, it's happening a lot. So Samu has, um, you know, he's got his his his. I don't know how to describe his attire. He's got new bridges, is what I wrote down. Yeah, that's what I have. But I'm, I was going to call them like scrubs, but they're not scrubs. Bridges. It's, that's We're bad from way the to South. describe them. Those are some bridges. Okay. Is he the English speaking one? That sounds so awful. Jesus. <laughs> Taken out of so, context is terrible, but it's, I have a reason to ask that. Okay. We we'll get we we'll get late into hey, this match. One of well, the okay. Samoan SWAT teams just broke English out on us out of nowhere a couple weeks ago. So that's a fair question. I agree. I knew where you were going with that. Yeah, because just out of the blue, we got the, the English from him. I wish Harper was here because somewhere uh, on our travels to the Little Rock area, metropolitan area, we lost the NWA off of our ring apron. <laughs> you knew he'd have brought it up. <laughs> well, now it's a thing because it's like sometimes it's on there and sometimes it's not. So that's going to infuriate him even more than not having it ever. Surely the TV company can afford some extra aprons with NWA on them. So right here as we're on the video version and we're in the, like the six minute and 50 second mark of 655. I thought this made a lot of sense for the match. And so I'm trying to dig up reasons to care. And I like the fact that Gilbert's working on the leg, trying to ground the monster that all made, I mean, that's, that's legitimate, good tactics by the, by hot stuff here to, to try to, Get this match in his favor because he's surely whoa. Run that know, back about ten seconds. I, I missed that the first time. I know why you said whoa, but finish your thought and then I'll hit play about okay. Gilbert Grant. So I just think it's a good move for him and it makes sense in in the context of the match. Now we have two Missy lookalikes walk in front of the heart the camera. How much hairspray? How much hairspray is in there? <laughs> God. You remember the holes in the ozone layer. I certainly do. <laughs> Every Tammy this side of the Mississippi was contributing to that shit. I know a lot of people talk about that like it was the 80s, but man, that went well into the 90s too. The hairspray just teased up ridiculousness. Not as much as you think, but yeah. Here's the thing. Decades don't, we say the 80s, but that doesn't end at 89. Culturally, out in the world, it's going to... I mean, look at these people in Little Rock. I mean, look at the people in the Smokies. They were dressed like it was 78 in the Smokies. Well, it kind of was for a lot of those people. Come on. See, that's what I'm talking about. I, I want to apologize to all our fans in the Smokies for this bullshit. I've had people in the Smokies tell me that. Oh. You think there's still a bunch of Sears that are open there? You can go shopping at Sears. That's a good question. Dude, Sears is the saddest place on earth. Oh, my you can God. Find them. It's talk about a company that was up there at one point to not almost non-existent. I mean, Harbor told me about the one they closed that was in Metairie. And I was like, God, that place was open forever. And I was like, it's closed. He's like, yep. Anyway, let's keep moving. Right. So you're right. Gilbert ground Samu, and that was the right thing to do because you're dealing with a savage here. You're dealing with a big man. Take him off his feet. Work the leg. Don't let him get any, you know, any momentum on you. And this is the right thing to do. Now, and this, this, and this is going to go a while, but there's a reason why it's going to go a while. Is because you don't just chop a giant down or a bigger man quickly. So that all makes sense. Doesn't mean that I was entertained the whole way, but it at least made sense. Yeah, because, I mean, he's got him on the ground a lot. Now, I was going to mention the one of the more entertaining parts of this match is Corny and JR taking mild jabs and pot shots at each other. JR at one point says, maybe you should come out of the closet, directing mm -hmm. that at Corny. The conversation didn't go anywhere, but I had to mention it because the match, like you said, it went a long time. It wasn't bad. It was what it needed to be for this era. I don't know if you could do this now because people would be bored, but I, for its for its era, it wasn't it wasn't bad. I feel like that they didn't send enough wrestlers to Little Rock, and everybody had to work long. Well, they did have a lot of long matches, but the crowd here's the here was the problem with this match: the crowd was quiet. 
the crowd was quiet, and that Uh-oh. wasn't There's good. There's a little blackjack sitting there. So, as we work towards the finish, um, Samu has a foreign object, and he misses Gilbert when he swings at Gilbert. Now, Joel Deaton is out there. That's what you were talking about. Um, the ref takes a bump when he gets hit by Gilbert accidentally. Samu drops the foreign object, and Deaton now has the foreign object on the outside. So Deaton is then he works his way, and then he gets into the ring while the ref is out cold. Samu tries to throw Gilbert into Deaton, who's got the object. Joel Deaton's got the object, but Gilbert reverses it, and Deaton accidentally hits Samu by accident. Um, the heels then beat down Gilbert after the match, and then Deaton puts the brass knucks in Gilbert's tights and tells the ref to check Gilbert's tights. The ref does, and the ref then awards the match to Samu, but here comes the greatest NWA world champion of all time, Tommy Rich, and he tells the ref, no, 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 no. No, they, no, no. No, no, no. They, I, they, they planted I, that on him. Go ahead. You about to say something. I just wanted to try to put it in context. Yeah, so... You better, Tommy. you better change this match. I'll cripple you. I cripple other refs before. <laughs> so, Tommy Rich, Mr. Personality, greatest NWA world champion in the world, in the history of the NWA, he tells the ref, no, 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 they planted that on Gilbert. And Deaton and then Samu beat Tommy Rich down, and we go to commercial. And that's how it uh, it all went down at the end of this thing. So, Doc, I guess I'll throw it to you. What did you think about the finish and how it all went down? I thought the finish was goofy. Um, good to see um, Cowboys and Samoans resume their historical friendship. Help Why is Deaton out? out? Well, that's what I was going to ask. Help me out. Why is Deaton out there? What, did we miss something between the partnership between Deaton like, Dean's got a good look, and Samu is good, and everybody here is good, but it's just, I mean, why? I don't have an answer. They got to the building, and they needed to put something together, and this is what happened. Hey, you, hey, hey, you know what? We fucking forgot to book this show. So you go get me a napkin, and I'll get a pencil. We'll book this show. I mean, there's obvious Deaton and Tommy Rich have had something because we've talked about that. And Samu and Gilbert have had something because we've obviously talked about that. But Deaton being out there for the match, walking down midway through, sitting at the folding, sitting in the folding chair at ringside, I I don't know what the logic is. I, I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's my, that's what I think when I see this. Any other thoughts before we keep going? It's confusing. It's very confusing. You just you 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 question a lot of things. You start going, "What? What are we doing? Why are we doing this? What's?" Uh, what's the oh, he just fished something out of his booty. He did. He took the brass knucks out, or oh, what's supposed He's to be like, a gimmick. Why does this smell so bad? Well. Don't say it. <laughs> Key. All right. Any other thoughts hey, before we go to the next I match? don't know if I said this before, but Joel Deaton, uh-oh. Hi. 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 Joel Deaton looks like a tombstone version of Buck Rock and Roll Zoom Off. He kind of does look like him, especially when you're not looking through HD. And, you know, you know, without all the kid touching and inappropriateness. Obviously. Right. Not I don't want to label Deaton. that because Joel Dayton is probably a fine person where Zumhoff is certainly not. 100%. Leave so, those kids alone. Just like uh, alone. Pink Floyd sang in that song. Well, they're they're also trying to murder. I neglected to say they they try to they put something around Tommy Rich's neck and they they try to murder him for a second on television. But you know who's keeping track? So we keep on moving and we go to the next match, which is Mean Mark Callis 
versus Pat Rose and a gentleman by the name of Chris Allen. Well, Doc, Mean Mark wins with no problem in this handicap match. What did you have from it, though? I was wondering what it would have been like to have Undertaker and and Psycho Sid be the skyscrapers. What do you mean what it was like? What it would have been like, because he was tagged with Spivey. Mean Mark pronouns. Oh, well, gotcha, gotcha. So what it what it would have what you're saying is you would have rather have seen or you just wonder, hey, what if what if me right. Mark or as Darren says, Callaway, <laughs> what if me Mark was Sid's partner as the skyscraper? Why is Teddy doing the funky chicken across the room? Dude, road? Teddy is MVP in nineteen ninety for all the wrong reasons, and that's what makes it great. What is y'all's people's term? Y'all, he's smelling himself. Dude, he's smelling himself. He's strutting like a chicken at times. He's talking about, I mean, he made Jim Cornette an honorary black Muslim called Kareem Muhammad Cornette. Dude, Teddy, and look at it. He's still strutting. He, then he'll start dancing. He's Sugar Ray Teddy. He's low-key MVP of 1990 for all the wrong reasons. Look at him. He's still dancing. He's on the side dancing during the match. What do you, I mean, he's got, he, that's the other thing. He wears like a, a butler type um, car valet outfit every, some weeks. He's Dude, that outfit he's looking there looks like he's going to bring room service up to my room. That's what I'm saying. It's like everything from the outfits to the hats. Like, I Teddy, better tip this guy good or he's going to come back and smear doo-doo in my key lock. Dude, Teddy is is tremendous. And he's not a wrestler. He's just a manager just being just being a goofball. Speaking of it's tremendous, great. Undertaker's really good here. We can't see anything in him. And I realize hindsight's twenty twenty, so nobody could have predicted him becoming what he became. But he's a big bastard that can fly. It's a big dude. He's very agile already. He, I mean, he works like a big man, but at the same time, he doesn't because he can do, you know, that top rope walk already. You're where telling he, me he wouldn't have, what if The Undertaker was a horseman? I mean, it's, it's just, here, like, it's so hard to say certain things sometimes because, you know, we all know what he becomes, but. We also know what Austin became. And it's just crazy when you think, man, WCW at one point had The Undertaker, prior to him being The Undertaker. They had Austin before he became Stone Cold. It's just crazy when you think about it. Those two guys. Think about all the money those two dudes drew. Not just them. They had Cactus. (laughs) You go down the list. You could go down the list, but I, I don't know. I mean, he's so young. That's the other part. You know, I guess we don't think about how young he is here, but hell, he ain't, but and not much longer. He's going to be Undertaker very young, too. We don't have four horsemen. Mm, we we will shortly. <laughs> yeah, but I need a fourth now. Does Man, it- you got you got to wonder, though. Like, I would love to know that since you bring this up. Like, okay. Oh, shit. So, so what would a flare or... We just got a text or, from Harper. What did he say? He wants to know for podcasting. Yeah, like right now. <laughs> Maybe we can uh, get a run in. We're recording. I've already... Is he responded. home? And you never know. He could be on... He could be... He could be on the... In Mar- on Mars, Really? I mean, you're Harper. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we did we did this early because because we thought he wasn't available. You go where you want to go. You do what you want to do. I mean, I mean, here's a bro. He just called us dicks. I didn't get it yet. Well, I got better signal than you. Okay, and I'm just seeing this meme you sent about. 
<laughs> from Bert and Ernie. That's messed up. I'm not reading this on air. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a good one. Okay, so let's see if he responds. <laughs> Any meme me. that has the word roofies in it is going to be good. But, okay, so what I was saying was, before before we see what Harper, if he texts us back and says to call him. Now, see, he told, dude, I just talked to him and Sunday. Now, and now we won't hear from him again for 10 days. I just talked to him Sunday, and he, he said, yeah, I'm not going to be back. I, You know, with everything going on, and I, I, I he's like, I, I can't promise I can do it, you know, this week. And I was like, no problem, dude, I understand, man. But back to the question I was asking while while we wait on him to answer, if it's going to be now or 10 days from now. You you asked a question about Callaway. Callaway, you know, D-man. Uh, but you asked a question about me, Mark, here, being a horseman. Like, okay, that's a good question. I wonder what somebody like Flair or Ole or Arn would have thought of that at that moment. Because that's a legitimate question. And I was trying to look something up related to that in case you were wondering why you can't see the screen all of a sudden. I mean, what do you think they would have thought? Just speculate. Because Flair doesn't know this, know him. I mean, he's probably like, this guy can't be no horseman. Why not? All right. So I was looking at something on the history of WWE.com, which I find a lot of the uh, Saturday night results for, you know, main event results and all that stuff. And on March 27th, 1990, Ben Martin will tell me that if this is true. Uh, in the Facebook group, but it says uh, when they did a TV tape in there in Canton, Ohio, March 27, 1990, I don't know if it was for pro or, or main event or what, but it does say prior to the taping on the 27th of 1990, March, Jim Cornette quit the booking committee out of frustration that Jim Hurd vetoed his plans to sell Bobby Eaton and Stan Lane's contracts to woman in order to make them horsemen. And I've heard Cornette talk about this before. Uh, Cornette's idea was intended to keep the three employed with the company after they received their termination notices. The booking committee had previously approved the idea. So I don't know how I don't know how accurate that timeline is of March 27, 1990, of that happening with Cornette quitting the booking committee. I actually thought that that happened prior to that. But, you know, you're talking about the horsemen. Well, it's been a long time since I've heard Cornette talk about this, but I thought I would mention that related to Bobby and Stan possibly becoming members if of the this is the kind of horse shit the last few weeks that's being tossed out why would he stay on the booking committee well i know I, I don't dispute that at all okay yeah it, there is no reason so i'm trying why don't you text hopper and say so so do you want us to call because he's not answering my question okay I go to so this. let's see he 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 well he's ghosted us of course so what's new to All right, you. while you do that, I'm going to go to Bam Bam Bigelow because we finally get a promo 24 minutes into this episode. Here we go. Yes. Stop talking uh, because uh, the promo is going to be playing. Pal. Abdullah the Butcher, you call him the boogeyman. He's left broken bones and broken hearts across all seven continents. Well, next week, right here on TBS, I'm putting Bam Bam Bigelow right to the thick of the action when I sign a match with him and Abdullah the Butcher next week on TV. Talk to him. You know, when I was a little kid, I would turn my lights off at night just waiting to meet the boogeyman on TBS. He's mine. That's right. Next week, right here, Abdullah, you're in a tear in. Yeah. Ladies. I got thoughts, but I need to know yours about Bigelow here. It's, it's, uh, he says yes. Hopper says yes. Tell me what your thoughts are on, on Bigelow while I go to... Uh, okay. Um, it's confusing that Abdullah is a bad guy, a good guy. It throws everything else in the natural order off. The other thing is there's only one boogie, and his, his name is Valiant. So that's a silly... I don't like them calling Abdullah the boogeyman. Why do we not... And I was trying to wait for Hopper to answer because he said to call him. Why... Why are we not bringing him in with a little bit more f- fanfare, flair type? We we surprised everybody with the stupidity of Abdullah the Butcher being in a box. Why are we, why, why did we do this with Bigelow? There's Harper. We'll, we'll go to my question in a second. 
Hey. What's up, man? Hey. Can, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yeah. Are you reporting yeah. live from Grand Isle? Yeah. Where are you? I'm reporting live from the stars are bright are through the night deep in the heart of Pasadena. So we're all oh. three in Texas. This is great. Well, he's a little ways yeah. from us because this is a big state. I love but... those. Fu- yeah. Those bam, bam. Notice how the internet connection is picked up for him, though, since he's in Texas. Mm, just give it a few more minutes. I mean, you never know. <laughs> because I'm closer. That's right. He's closer. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, God. Humper Dick's big face. <laughs> Okay, Doc, let's hey, go back to what I, I just heard on a, what podcast was I listening to where they said Humperdinck was a chick magnet. Oh, I mean, really? Like he could, he would, he could talk him, talk him, like he could, he could make it happen. So he was a sales. remember what podcast it was and the podcast we all normally listen to, text Mike. <laughs> I have no clue what podcast you're talking about. Oh. It's like a cartoon character. But but so he got rid of the Samoans, but he's back and he's got Bigelow and Bigelow gets denounced in the most benign of ways. OK, I need to ask Harper a question first. Harper, did you even watch this episode? Uh, like, how did you? I, 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 no. I OK, I didn't think so. Um, Yeah. Last I talked to you, you was like, yeah, I probably can't do it, uh, you know, till I get back in town. And then I get situated with because of the gas situation and all that stuff. So, yeah, um, it's a pleasure to have you. How bad was it for real? The storm? Yeah. It sucked. Oh. I mean, it was fucking rough out there, bro. My dog had to take a shit during the storm. Did you ever get that that diarrhea taken care of? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's been taken care of. But but she had to shit during the storm with all the shits blowing around, like right in the middle of it. And I put her outside and she she went and took a shit. (laughs) He went out there with her. That is the point in which Mrs. Harper picked up the phone and starts talking to me. And I found out that the headset had broken uh, the fifth or sixth one. So Harper is probably talking to us on a different headset at this moment yeah. in time. See? Did you tell Harper what else she said? Why? I don't know what he's talking about. Apparently she told Mike that we could tell everybody that it got broken up her butt. Whoa, again? <laughs> she, she jokingly said, you could just tell the people he stuck it up my butt or something. Wow. She's a keeper. Mrs. Yeah. Harper is a is a, is a class act <laughs> for sure. And she said you had no clue how you broke this one this time. I, I don't like. <laughs> I thought that broken one was the other one, and I kept looking for the other. I was like, well, "Where the fuck are the good headphones at?" <laughs> and I kept looking, and I was like, "Fuck, these are the good <laughs> headphones." That sounds like fuck it. I, I'm not gonna say nothing. <laughs> and so I just fucking kept them and she's like why do you keep using this and I was like cause it's the only ones I had she's like you, you fucking broke another one <laughs> I was like yeah and then she ordered one off of like Amazon or something oh <sighs> yeah <laughs> hurricanes pandemics but you're still you that's great I'm gonna put them on FEMA's uh, uh, tab <laughs> He's going to put them on FEMA's tab. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so when do you think you're going to have power, Harper? Uh, today, tonight or tomorrow, because we're leaving tomorrow. Uh-oh. How's, been, how's Texas been? Bruh, these fucking Mexican 99 cent stores are badass. <laughs> like, what I fucking love buy- these places. What have you been buying there? Uh, that badass hat, that fucking Budweiser hat. I got uh-huh. that at the fleet. Oh, and I finally got a oh, mic. I got my Clayton Kershaw jersey. You found one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. 
I got it, at, bro. Come out in, in in tatters. Let him they let him talk. This, let him talk. Let him talk. They got this place called Trader Village. It's fucking huge. Mm-hmm. It, and now it got. I got Actually, lost Mike in that lives fucking on the grounds place. of Trader's Village. He has a he tra- probably does. He has a trailer oh, that he backed Doc, up. Doc, will you let the man talk? Go ahead, Harper. Trader's Village. Tell me all about it. Even though I've been to the one in the DFW area. And I got uh. I finally found my Clayton Kershaw jersey. And see, what else did I buy? I bought a corn dog. They got rides there, too. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. yeah. Get some, did you get some tires? No. Socks. I got socks. <laughs> and I got some underwear. Don't watch some, those either. Yeah. <laughs> and some undershirts. And uh, see, what else did I get? They got some other shit, too. Forgot. But, yeah, they got a lot of shit in that fucking place. But they even sell fucking animals in there. They probably don't want that advertised. Yeah, they had, they, they're they selling, like, the pet birds and snakes. Yeah. I was, like, how in the, I was like, how in the fuck can you get away with this shit? Yeah, the, the, well. one, the one here is the same way. There's, like, a, a well, there used to be a reptile type. Uh, yeah exotic store and there's a bird store bro it, it, it's dude the, the one here man it, it's so big there's so much stuff you you couldn't make it through all of it in one day bro i got lost by trying to leave yeah is there an army army surplus booth they got that and there's a whole bunch of i was like fuck they got the boot places yeah and i was and I was going to get the boots, but the y'all, I said, fuck, I can't wear these boots. I'm going to look like a, a drug dealer on the Telemundo soap opera if I wear these fucking boots. <laughs> I, was like, y'all, I was like, y'all just don't have, have cowboy boots like something George Strait would wear. I mean, do I got to look like I'm a, you know, a drug dealer from fucking Tijuana? <laughs> fuck. He used to go out well, there in high school to get like uh, band shirts, like concert shirts. Yeah, I didn't Calvary. see that because I was looking for that. They had a so woman selling an old uh, an old Atari. She wanted to fucking nine dollars for us. Like you fucking crazy. What about speakers? Could you get speakers there? No, they had bad speakers. They had a lot, bruh. One dude had like the old toys. He had he had like the LJN fucking wrestling guys. I was like, oh fuck, that motherfucker wanted thirty bucks a pop. It's like you were out your fucking mind, bro. I mean, adjusted for inflation, it that's probably damn near what they cost in the eighties. Bro, bro, go on eBay and see how much they. they I, I know that's what. Look, I know They're like ten the, bucks. The the. One of my, the guy that used to sponsor this show for very little yeah. money. Um, are we still got, are we still okay with him? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're we're cool. Um, he he's got a a shop at the one in this area, and he sells those. He's got tons of crap, tons yeah. of the like figures. He's fucking crazy, sticking up paying thirty dollars for this shit. When I can go on eBay right now and get it for like ten, fifteen fucking dollars. Oh, is is that how much they are on there? Something like that, yeah. Okay. I was like, you fucking crazy. How, how had... much? How much were they in the eighties? The LJN. Mm, probably almost probably like seven ninety nine. I could have thought they were more than that, but they were like maybe seven nine nine to ten bucks. They okay, weren't so cheap. If, if they were eight bucks back then in today's dollars, that makes them twenty dollars. Twenty dollars and yeah. seventy cents. But these have been played with. I hear you. You don't know where they've been stuck. Right. Yeah, I mean they might be, you know, somebody might be putting them in a their girl's butthole like you do with your headsets that break all the time. And then I went to the other one. It used to be an old Montgomery Ward. Remember them? It was like yeah. a yeah. Sears. That one had the fucking chiropractor that I went to. And I think it was something from like Breaking Bad or something. It was, it was a chiropractor at a fucking flea market. I was like, "What? All right, fuck it, bro. Twenty five dollars." Well, this is certainly more entertaining than 
Bigelow's match where he beat uh, Bob Cook and definitely more entertaining than Abdullah the Butcher and Norman versus Captain Mike Rotunda. Uh, I'm sorry, Abdullah the Butcher and, Ca- and Norman with Captain Mike versus the Galaxian. So please continue, Hopper. And then uh, it was a white dude, too, with his, uh, uh, with his wife or whatever working it. So you so, went to Better Call Saul, who happened to be a chiropractor. Basically, that's what it seemed like. Wow. Okay. It was like if you go there and you say like the you know the magic word, you know, they say go to booth fourteen, and that's where you get your meth from or something. <laughs> so they were confused when you actually wanted chiropractic services. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you get all aligned? Do I? Did you get all aligned? Did you get your spine all? Oh, yeah. I mean, the guy cracked me and shit. You know, I feel better. All right. Well, welcome I mean, to fucking, Texas. Yeah. I mean, 25 bucks, bro. So when when are you heading back? Tomorrow. Oh, well, there goes that idea. Dude, I got to put on, on a hiring freeze. You got put on a hiring freeze? What do you mean? Because everything's still kind of shut down, and, and there's like, like the stores and shit is still kind of fucked up and shut down. They said, yeah, you know, for stuff, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna call you maybe like two weeks to get you back to work. I'm like, I was like, what the fuck? All right, that doesn't shock me just based on the electricity situation yeah. and the movement of goods throughout the area. Yeah. Um, you know, I know beer is essential and sodas are essential, but there's other there's other more essentials that needed to be uh, trafficked down there and brought to <laughs> goods brought down there, given the situation. But yeah. New Orleans made out much better than most other areas. That's a fact, Jack. What the fuck? So I'm going to come up there and go and go work for y'all for like two or three weeks all right all right boy that would be funny was that the oh. worst storm you've been through uh i guess yeah can you explain to the people what a hundred mile an hour winds is like you're sitting there and you can just hear shit breaking outside do you hear a boom like fuck i hope that wasn't on my car and Boom, you hear something else, and this, and you go outside, and there'll be like a big ass branch that's fucking sitting there, or like some piece of debris. You just hear shit breaking and, and, and fucking falling all over the place. So, inside, yeah. you're just sitting there playing. When a power is out, so you're just sitting there with, with the little fucking GE radio, just like you just. Sitting there sitting waiting there to hear shit. Head between your knees, elementary yeah. tornado warning style. Yeah, you just sitting there like, fuck it. I was looking out the window, bro. They got two trees in the back. I thought they were going to go down, but they didn't. It's All scary right. hearing those uh those branches snap and those. I mean, and that wind's whipping, man. I don't know. I, yeah, I compare it to, I, dude. I I just remember feeling like. Holy crap, it sounds like a train's blowing through. Yeah, I mean... Just the way stuff's whistling and uh, the noise is indescribable, man. It's like a freight train, bro. I went outside to see. I was like, what the fuck? Look at this shit. Because it, because every time I, I would hear something hit the house, i go, fuck. And I would go outside and I will like, pull some big-ass branch off the fucking roof in the fucking hurricane. And I'm drenched in... And then I would go inside, change my clothes, and then like five minutes later, bam, another one would come like, fuck, and I'll go back out. And then it got to the point, I just went out in my fucking drawers because I got tired of changing my fucking clothes, <laughs> pulling fucking big-ass you branches off the fucking there house. In your, drawer, in your drawers with like a broom just sweeping the sidewalk <laughs> in the middle of a hurricane. But I didn't flood, which is good, so... Yeah, to say the least. It could have been a lot worse. It really could have been ten times worse. New Orleans got spared, man. Oh, no. What am I watching? Well, Hopper, you're watching uh, oh, last no. week. 
when you missed because you know we knew you weren't going to be there sting announced his his uh he is going to come back and he's bringing robocop with him to capital combat 90 so we did discuss that you got any thoughts on sting and robocop or would you uh, like to uh, wait until wait until let's just after. wait because i remember this yeah but that is that computerized font from 1990 though yes didn't they That's use terrible. the actual actor right so i was always in the impression that they I was always yeah. under the impression that they did. I've heard Cornette say it was him, but recently there's been some chatter online that it wasn't him. I have no idea. I always thought it was him that was there. I think that guy lives in Kenner. Really? Yeah. The actor? Peter Weller or whatever his name is? Yeah. That's a first. I, I did not know that. Yeah. By the way, if you want to buy Starcade, it's thirty nine ninety eight. Wherever 40 you uh, bucks. forty. The only thing that would have got our asses whipped more than asking for the pay per view would be to ask forty dollars for a shit that's already happened. Yeah, fuck, bro, forty bucks. Doc, adjusted for inflation, that cassette cost eighty five dollars and 72 cents in today's dollars for a star cage future <laughs> god that's like something you'll see at five at, at well at fucking one of those mexican dollar stores <laughs> Harper's, Harper's gonna be referencing <laughs> trader's village now on the show <laughs> i haven't been to there i haven't been there in like shit 25 years i need to really yeah my daughter and wife went the earlier this summer to to get something, uh, I don't even remember what it was, but yeah. Whew. Anyway, those places well, are like it's like going into it's like going back to 1995 when you walk in a place like that. A lot yeah. of Astro shit. Ugh. Yeah, really. Fuck all that noise. <laughs> Says a Dodgers fan, of course. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's keep going. We'll get Harper in on this. He'll be able to watch this along with us while we while we discuss it. Um, so again, they show they show Starcade here. We see a bunch of clips from it. They're trying to sell the VHS for what would have been eighty five dollars in today's money, which is definitely ridiculous. And then we're gonna go right here to a promo uh, f- with Hawk, and this is from NWA Pro. And let me just hit play, and then we can talk about it on the other side. Here it is. You know, fans, we said there were more to the story in this situation with with Doom and uh, the Road Warriors that meets the eye. We're going to show you a recent altercation right after uh, Hawk beat Reed by using the foreign object. We will say that. But he did beat Hacksaw Butch Reed. But soon thereafter, Hawk was being interviewed by Lance Russell. Don't say the word Hawk beat Reed. He was being interviewed by Lance Russell, and Lance had the opportunity to stick that banana nose of his in another confrontation because here is where Sugar Ray and Doom get even. Let's see the videotape from NWA Pro Wrestling. Okay, right now on the NWA Pro, we want to take the opportunity to talk at least to one of the Road Warriors. They are so busy with not only their schedule of wrestling matches, but also their personal appearances. We appreciate, Hawk, you're breaking away to come in here because we do have something that we want to talk to you about, and that is doom. Brother, these guys have started an arsenal war. They are bringing everything in the world into the ring in there. They are causing you lots of problems, no doubt about it. Well, Lance, let me tell you something. If I were going to fight me or animal, I'd bring a weapon, too. (laughs) <laughs> that makes very good sense, I can say. But they're doing it at a time and a place where they're not supposed to. Are you saying that Doom is giving the Legion of Doom a hard time? A hard time. I got to tell you one thing. They are using everything with loaded gloves and all of that. And a hard time is the least of what they're giving you. Well, when me and Animal were growing up in the streets of Chicago, that wasn't easy. That was a hard time. We got here. We're looking good, aren't we? When we entered the sport of professional wrestling, we decided that'd be a hard time, but we're doing good at that, ain't we? You see, Lance, hard times are what the road warriors are all about. It's a hard time being a road warrior, but it's a much harder time 
facing one of us in the ring. And you don't know, I don't know if Doom is still in the ring or still around this arena anywhere, but I'll tell you what, if they want to come down... Hey, look out! Hey! Doom jumps up here! Jumps Hawk with his back turned in the... All right, so Hawk's cutting a promo. Doom comes out. They jump Hawk. Uh, the Steiner brothers actually come out to make the save in a second. If you're watching along with us on the video version at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. If you're not a patron, become one now at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. We've got a pay-per-view coming up and you can get access to all of our Patreon content there. Um, with well, Capital Combat, the Patreon uh, or the uh, pay-per-view I'm talking about. Doc, any thoughts on this as they spike Pile Drive Hulk oh. in the middle of the ring? Yeah, show that again. Okay, hold on one second. Let me uh, hit reverse here. Or I thought Hawk was decent. I mean, he. Yeah. Um... Did you see? I want y'all to pay. Look at Teddy. Look at Teddy Long in the background. Watch him. Watch him dancing. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even explain what he's doing. <laughs> anyway, the Steiners come out and they they save Hawk. Uh, keep going, Doc. What were you about to say? No, I thought Hawk was good there. Um. Again, if they'll just let these two teams beat the shit out of each other, we should be all right. Agree. The The bad thing they do is, uh, not to spoil it, but, you know, this is 20-plus years old, uh, or actually 30-plus years old. Ellering and, and Teddy end up in, in a bit of a tussle uh, with, a, with a stupid stipulation, you know, because, of course, they're going to ruin everything here in 90, it seems. Anyway, uh... Any thoughts on this promo? Uh, I was. Should, did you want me to play it, Doc? I wasn't sure. I know Hawk was very intense when they challenged Doom. Yeah, let's hear what he's got to say. Yeah, let me go back because he he's he is he is really good here. Uh, here it is. And we're back here live, ladies and gentlemen, with the most dominant team in wrestling history, the Road Warriors. And we just saw a piece of videotape. What happened to Hawk? The last time that Doom circled the wagon, so to speak, when they had three on one. Jim Russ, we're not asking anybody for anything. From now on, what we say goes. We're telling you, we're not asking the CEO. We're not asking the supervisor. We're not asking the chief. We're not even asking Ted Turner or his mother, for that matter. We want Doom and we want them today. We want them on this show today because of all the stinking stuff that's been said and done. We're tired of waiting. We want them today. And you better do something about it. Well, I'll do the best I can. I can't guarantee that we can get the match. No best you can nothing. Be an animal. Why Doom today? Tell them. You know something, Jim Ross? It all started when we had the skyscrapers and Doom and Jenny Long came down and put their nose in where it didn't belong. Then I had the captain's match when Ron Simmons put Reed in a fierce, another stab from behind. That Hawk is in a captain's match, gets hit in the head. We've had enough. Doom, we want you today. We're going to kick your butts once and for all. What a rush. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll get Teddy Long out here to see if he'll answer the challenge. The Road Warriors want Doom, and they want him today, and we'll be right back. All right, Doc, what do you have? I thought they were pretty good. They got to go find Teddy. He's probably got a set of 22s he's trying to sell out in the parking lot. That's nice. <laughs> what? It's messed up, dude. Come on. <laughs> this wrong if anybody on the roster was going to have him, wouldn't it be him? We got Probably. a Hummer sitting on 32s. Remember that song? Yes. There you go. <laughs> I got a Hummer sitting on 32s. And it's all good. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know it. <laughs> Is that by Michael Angel, voice? what's the name of that song? No, it's a rap. Oh. I forgot See, who it's, that is. It's, yeah, dude, I'm drawing a blank. I, I got it, I, I'm visualizing it, but yeah. That was actually good, man. That was, that was some classy stuff. Uh, by the way, not to hurt anybody's feelings here, but I think this is the Road Warriors' last like pay per view appearance in WCW, at least for this era, uh, coming yeah. up at Fuck. Capital Combat. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, they're gonna fucking leave, and is then they're gonna end up on cereal boxes. 
Yeah. Um, they don't leave quite yet, but but it's cut. I think I think it's soon. Uh, we're not too far away from them from them leaving. So anyway, in case anybody's uh, wondering uh, <laughs> about that. All right, Doc. Any uh, Harper? Any thoughts on the promo? With the uh, with Road the Road Warriors. Warriors? And I know you didn't watch it ahead of time. I, I, I no. get that. I want to uh, see him fucking wrestle now, bro. Because who brought back then a spike power driver? What the fuck? That's a yeah. That's an act, senseless act of violence. Yes. The only thing worse is if they'd have done it on the floor. You're right. So we go from the Road Warriors saying they want Doom right now this week to a replay from last week when Luger came out interrupted the promo with woman and flair that Cornette was uh, conducting Luger comes out, goes to attack flair. Remember woman or flair pulled woman in front of him as to say, you know, you're not going to come through a woman to get to me. Uh, <laughs> long story. Sh- <laughs> yeah. They keep fighting. Arn and Oli then put the boots to Luger again. It's a replay of what was covered last week. Uh, we'll keep moving uh, unless Harper's got thoughts on this since he wasn't here when we covered that. That was that little uh, jobber guy, huh? The what, that ran... came out to say yeah, the first one. Yeah. Yeah, it was the little bitty one. The short yeah. one. It was. That was funny. Hey, little Look fella. Yeah. What the fuck's he going to do? <laughs> Look at how fluffy Flair there is. God, that, that's just a. It's almost uh, like he went to a dog groomer. <laughs> Speaking of people who look like they went to a jog groomer. <laughs> All right. So earlier we or a little while ago we heard the Road Warriors challenge Doom. Now we're going to go to Doom and Teddy Long here. Let's see if they've got a response or if they're going to accept or what. Here that is. Well, I've been joined here by Sugar Ray Long and the team of Doom. And you know, the Road Warriors, they have not learned their lesson. They don't know when to quit. And they're still challenging Doom. Now, the question is, Sugar Ray, are you going to accept the challenge? You know what? I'm not going to accept the challenge from the Road Warriors because Doom and I, we don't have anything to prove to the Road Warriors. You people seen it on national TV. We beat the Road Warriors. You've seen it yourself, Jimmy Cornette. So far as I'm concerned, the Road Warriors don't mean nothing to us. Now, my concentration right now is on the World Tag Team titles because you're looking at the number one contenders. And the NWA had finally found out that the Road Warriors cannot get the job done. These are the two men that can get the job done. We've got a great picture here. And not only that, it's the perfect color, Daddy. Right there in the wrestling wrap-up, the centerfold, the team of Doom and Sugar Ray Long. Hey, you guys are going to wrestle today. We, You're just not going to wrestle the Road Warriors, We right? will wrestle on TV today, but we're not going to wrestle the Road Warriors because we don't have to. We beat them up enough. What do you think about it, Doom? We're going to give them punks time to heal up. And another thing, if you want some of us, you don't see us running away from it. We thought you had enough. i tell you another thing. If you think that we are going to be the ones running. You got another story. We're the number one contender. If you want some of us, all you got to do is sign the dotted line, and I can promise you one thing, you will get your field. Room rules. Well, there you have it. James Brown is free, and the world tag team title is next. And now, let's go to the ring. They say they ain't got time for the real wars. Doc, what'd you think? I like that. We beat y'all up enough. We don't, we, no. There we he can't is. do that right now. Rick Ryder. I liked it too. It's some good heel work. You he know? says, you know, he says, as far as I'm concerned, you ever heard anybody say that and not been like, dude, that's Fuck bullshit. you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's like saying, I ain't racist, but. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned. As far as I'm concerned, I don't want him around me. <laughs> <laughs> look at that tubby. God, look at that beast. Jesus. <laughs> Christ. Boy. What state are they in? Arkansas. Arkansas. Oh, Arkansas. Well, that explains everything. Look at that thing. A Razorback. Uh, the wild on the front row. Geez. And that kid standing behind them with the fucking sting hat. And there's like a, a fat, shitty version of fucking Bobby Eaton behind him. 
Uh. Harper, Harper came in salty. <laughs> That's messed uh, up, ladies man. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a wild razor back on the front row wearing a black dress and a... What is that? Hey, tr- you know what's crazy is they put the camera on them because they're the two most attractive women standing around No, no, around we saw there. two other women with Missy-type hair. Oh, early. really? Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. We saw two other women. I claimed for you and I just in case. Okay. We, we saw two other women with Missy-type hair. That did not mean they were attractive. Right. No, but I claimed them just in case. Okay. I want to take it to Gillies later on. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you going to put on your granimals? Yeah. <laughs> Gillies. Are you a real cowboy? It depends on what you consider a real cowboy. Okay, Mike, real real quick. Michael Mike, Hayes. Hold, no, but hold on, and I'm going to let y'all talk. I'm going to get this in. I want to get two things in while you ask Harper about that photo in a second. Michael Hayes takes on Rick Ryder. Hayes wins the match after hitting Ryder with the DDT, and Hayes was acting like a face before he hit the finisher. I mean, he's trying to get the crowd into it, which is really weird because he's a heel. They do also show a replay of Z-Man versus Stan Lane from last week after the Hayes match. Remember, Eaton hit Z-Man, and Lane got DQ'd, and then there were shenanigans at the end, and Pillman comes after Eaton. If you want to know what went down, just check out last week's show when we covered that match in full, in in hold. Okay, now, Doc, yeah. I'm, I want to throw it to you because you, you were about to get on Harper or ask him about that photo. Well, Harper or, or... sent us a picture this week that I'm, I'm assuming he found in his Texas trip of yeah. him and some co- girl cousins outside of Gillies. Uh, what year do we think that is? Uh, 81, 2. So how old is young Harper in that picture? Four or five. What's, are you still close with the girl cousin on your right on the left of the picture? I don't I don't Well, one of them was my cousin. The other two were my sisters. Okay. I can't remember I, who was who, who was standing where. Well, the one on the left of the picture let me was see. looking down at you like this little motherfucker stinks. <laughs> That's nice. Why, why you talk so nasty? Cause I'm a nasty motherfucker. You know, you know what that movie's from? Ah, uh. life. Since y'all always like to quote movies from me, and well, you didn't hit our movie quote from earlier. I'm from Spur. Yeah, <laughs> I'm from Spur. Okay, That's back a to real the picture. place. It is. Uh, that's my cousin, the one that's in the white with, with the pink tails or whatever. Yeah. Let me see this. Don't they call them pigtails and not pink yeah, tails? Whatever, bro. <laughs> Your cousin's which one? The one that's in the white. Yeah, she's looking at. She's looking down at you like this. Sorry, motherfucker. <laughs> Harper's wearing a tank top, short I- set. With those are the most 1981 socks and shoes combination Bruh, I've ever seen. Those were my Empire Strikes Back shoes. I remember those. And my, Harper's looking at the camera like, "What the fuck's wrong with you?" <laughs> I like the Schlitz neon that's in the back. When was the last time you seen a fucking Schlitz neon? Bruh. Okay, so hold on. You could. 18 years old, huh? Yeah, 1973. No. Like, no, this isn't. It says you could be served. Oh, you can be served alcohol as long as you were born as of August 27th, 1973. Yeah. And that makes this 1991. I don't know. That's not 1991. No, you were already doing bad things. Yeah, this ain't right. <laughs> Something's wrong. Man. You could be yeah, served. Oh, Something's wrong right. with this picture. Oh, yeah, that's true. Clown it back in the doorway there. Hopper, are you sure this is you in this picture? Because that's that yeah, would that's be physically me, impossible. Because if this yeah, that's is me. Not, yeah, this can't be right. Because because that would mean that a person would be eight years old and could be served liquor. This is Texas. No, 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 Uh, no, no. I mean, I know Texas is messed up, but come on. Well, I'm looking at this. 
And I see that rodeo clown underneath that club entrance sign. I hope y'all stayed away from him. Yeah. Dude. The, the people have no idea what we're talking about here. But Hopper. It's a picture has of Harper. Lone Star beer. How old are you here? Five years old? Something like that, yeah. Just picture Hopper at five years old and you'll In just start In a tank top and shorts. And mid calf socks with the red ring around them, and what looks like some red and yellow Empire Strikes Back shoes. Yeah, and he's really looking like what the hell y'all looking at? Well, I gotta take this picture. This is some bullshit. Yeah, yeah, for real. The, the <laughs> typical annoying little fucking kid. <laughs> I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get it in this club back here and get a cold beer. <laughs> cold beer. That bubble. truck. That truck though. It's truck. What? I'll take that truck. That's probably like a 79, 78. Yeah. That sign's got something wrong with it. We okay. got another sign that says, if you don't want a bumper sticker on your bumper, lower both sun visors. This is riveting audio, Doc. I thought you were going to do a better job with this photo. What am I not doing? I don't know. It's kind of hard to describe it because, like, you know, at least with the video versions, we can describe what we're seeing here. Nobody's got an idea of what this picture looks like. I thought Harper put it on social media, but I'm glad he did. <laughs> oh, I drink some Lone Star, Doc, just to be uh, that guy. Lone Star's not very good. Yeah, it's like PBR. It yeah, it's like Texas PBR. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Is that Mike Ranger Star? Oh, wait. No, that's Cuban Assassin. Mike didn't know you... what the fuck I was talking about when I said I knew it. what you were talking about. No, you didn't. I did. I did know. All right, we'll keep going with this wrestling thing. We got uh, Brian Pillman in the Z-Man versus the Cuban Assassin and Ned Brady here. Doc, thoughts on the U.S. Tag Team Champions, Pillman and Z-Man? In this um, match, I should ask. Uh, you know, you mentioned earlier that Corny and Jr. were going at it in the first match. They continue to go at it here. I didn't take any notes, but they were jostling back and forth here. So yeah, they are, yeah. they're bored, I think. Yeah, they don't, they're, they're not entertained. I mean, you know, they're, one of them's asking the other one when he's going to come out the closet. It's just... You can't do that. Uh, so anyway, this thing goes down. Ned is is climbing to the top rope, and Pillman really shows his athleticism. Hold on, I'm gonna go to it because I think I got a timestamp from it. Well, here's my question. Look at this. Watch this. Watch, watch Pillman's athleticism here. This is what I want. This is what I wanted to tell you. Uh, share with you. N Nasty Ned is climbing to the top. Watch Pillman, dude. He made that look simple. As Ned's almost to the top rope and he jumps up and just drop kicks him in the head. Dude, you got to be a hell of an athlete to pull that off. He's got ups. Does he? Holy crap. Uh, what were you about to ask me, Doc? Well, I was wondering why the crowd in um, Little Rock, Arkansas was chanting USA for the okay. team. When they're fighting nasty Ned Brady, I guess Cuban assassin. He's Cuban is guy, yeah, yeah. Well, we're Cuban. Could we wait till he gets in the ring? I mean, come on, bro. What'd you say about these people when we got started tonight? Before Hopper got on, uh, that I really have always had a, a, a strong affinity uh, for the people of Arkansas and a good time every time I've been there. Yeah, well, that's what that's what you said, of course, <laughs> idiot. Okay, <laughs> anyway. Uh, how's this thing in? Poorly. Who cares? <laughs> Z-Man has Nasty Ned and a bear hug up high, and Pillman hits Ned with another standing drop kick where his feet are like eight feet in the air. Well, good Pillman for him. is incredible. He's just an incredible athlete. And just saddled. The fact that he can jump that high carrying zinc on his back like that is fucking phenomenal. I, 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 it reminds me of, of a back bar. Doesn't he kind of look like him? The Cuban, Cuban assassin? assassin? In yeah. The state? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. He does. Boy, he sticks around in here for a while, doesn't he, Doc? Who? I Cuban think assassin? he lasts a good while. 
Shit, he well, shows up at one of those World War 60 man battle. That's royals. what I'm saying. Right. And then he's on like worldwide in the mid 90s and he's doing jobs. I think he lasts like the, yeah, like the mid to late 90s, wasn't he? That's what I'm, yeah. He was in some like uh, kind of like a little. Like, oh, some little... It was a tag team. It was right, him and... exactly. Right. They were like. Hey, as long as were... the checks keep clearing. I forgot the fuck was the name of it. They were kind of like these like mid carters that would like never win. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it was the Cuban assassin. Yeah. I forgot there was somebody tag. I mean, actually, I mean, not that his gear is bad for the gimmick right here, but you know, they they end up going with tights and boots and got the Cuban hey. colors and. I mean, nasty Ned it looks like he works at the break check down the street. <laughs> he's he's the tough guy at the break check. Yeah. <laughs> I don't oh. like these foreign cars. Hey, just, hey, your rotor is, is slightly warped just a little bit, but we can <laughs> probably calibrate that. And you can probably get another 7,500 miles out of it, you see. <laughs> you people who buy these uh, foreign cars, man, let me tell you something. You should buy oh, American. Oh. All right. Anyway, what's that's up, over. Margo, what's up, Trade Tariff Mike? Jesus Christ. Z-Man I'd like to apologize to the win. rest of the world for Mike. Get you an American vehicle. I'll tell you something. Now you know we live in Texas, Doc. And some of these Texas he, folks. Damn, he did get high, huh? Some of these Texas he got high, yeah. Not high. He jumped high. Yeah. Some of these some of these Texas folks, Doc. Boy, they will say some some crazy things. I had one old Texan tell me one time, let me tell you something. The reason I don't buy no no Japanese vehicles is I ain't <laughs> I can't get it out. <laughs> I, oh. He said this, not me. Okay. I ain't <laughs> let me repeat. I don't stand by I do not approve of what this man told me. Tell you why I don't buy them them Japanese vehicles. He did he say Japanese. Japan vehicle. Uh, I don't buy no rice burner. Oh, no. Of course not. We've talked about that on the show. Then, the same dude was really on a racist tirade. Uh, he said, he was talking about Mexicans. He uh, said, oh, come on. He said, if I keep buying that Modelo beer, that'll keep them over there, keep them over there with the jobs. I was like, bruh. Mean? What's that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? I mean, I like Modelo. I guess he's keeping them in business, so he's like keeping them over so there. That's here. his way of helping the, the immigration problem. Well, that's was, like me buying stuff for the ninety nine, uh, the ninety nine cent store. I it was like, true. I was like, dude, <laughs> what the hell? Uh, all right, keep moving. Uh, we get a promo uh, from the Rock look, and Roll. I like to what? celebrate diversity in all people. I don't know what that has to do with. I don't uh, like all this racist talk. Oh, yeah. I agree. He was a stone cold, pure racist son of a gun. Oh, this guy was terrible. He said a few other things, which are too bad for me to repeat on air. And oh, I, no. He was just, he had me, I was kind of chuckling at the ignorance. That's how bad it was. I just couldn't help myself. He And, and he was looking at me like, I, like, like, what's so funny, boy? Oh, he said that to you and hit the RVD pose. Like, he had just instilled some pearls of wisdom on you. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess he could tell, like, that I was laughing sarcastically at him. Like, bro, you off the wall. Okay, keep it moving. He's Hennessy uh, tough now, guys. Look out. That's right. Oh, Doc, you know what my wife got? She uh -oh. bought one of those. She bought one of those um ice cube makers that makes, like, uh, craft ones, ice cubes. Like the big old shapes. The big old no, it's just a big old round like. Yeah, you drop that in the glass and it just stays forever. Oh, Bruh. I've seen those. I was like, "What the fuck? It just makes like a baseball." Dude, drop that in the Hennessy glass. Pour that oh, Hennessy shit. over it, man. Just let, let go of all your worries until That's somebody right. messes with you and you can shoot them. I gotta no, no, no. I doc. I need something to get me foot through football season. LSU's garbage. 
losing yeah. to UCLA. I got the Saints. Lord knows what they're going to do. <sighs> Something got to get me through this. I mean, you got a lot of experience with bad football. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's why I oh, had a lot of experience super. with mediocre football. No, you can get bad football. A lot of okay. people around here got got experience with shitty football. That's oh true. yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you really like the ball ice? It's like like Hopper said, it's damn near the size of a baseball. You <laughs> and like you drop it on in a ball full of juice. Yeah, what's wrong done? with that? Are you going to insult our, our our folks out there who? I just thought maybe it was weird for you, for you since you're usually n- normally used to two instead of one. Gotcha. I, I seen they got the uh, the water bottle ones. You saw those? They're like the long, slender ones. So you drop it like in a water bottle. Oh, that's nice. But I, I, I'm thinking this ice was made. I mean, let's be honest. When you fill your ice tray, it's from the fucking faucet, bro. So what the fuck's the point of putting that ice cube in the bottle fucking water? <laughs> what if you I use think, artisanal water? I, I mean, th- what th- the fuck? I, you're Hopper, putting, you're I putting think people... faucet water in the spring water. I think I think I think some people actually pour out pour fo- pour bottled water into that thing. That's and fucking then, stupid. I totally agree. Look, I'll drink faucet water. I ain't got no problem with faucet Look, water. I right? drink faucet water fucking all the time. Yeah, it's got fluoride like, oh, in it. it. I, that's right. That's why my <laughs> teeth are so white. <laughs> okay, so let's keep the show moving as we near the end. The Rock and Roll Express cut a meat and potatoes promo. The Freebirds cut a meat and potatoes promo. I got nothing from it, Doc. Did you have anything from it? No. We then go to Cactus Jack versus Rick Fargo. But before the match can begin, Kevin gets mad at Cactus. And if you were watching the video version of this a little while ago, Kevin Sullivan slaps Cactus as Cactus was reading another book. And also... um. I'm sorry, Kevin Sullivan is going to end up wrestling this match against Rick Fargo, even though right. it's supposed to be Cactus. He hit him with that slap, and you could see the sweat flying off. Not just that. Did you see him trip over the steps on the outside? Yeah. Cactus busted his ass. Man, Sullivan is abusing him. You say 114.28? Yeah. All right, hold That's on. Painful. We'll get there. All right, so we're at a one fourteen uh, sixteen. Uh, we're ten seconds away from it. Sullivan All is right. going to Irish rip, or no? Rick Fargo is hitting Sullivan. Here it comes Doc. Um. Oh, there you go. Okay. Not it wasn't painful. painful. They it wasn't it. painful, but Fargo didn't do something right, and Sullivan just dumped him over and then stomped on him. And it looked like they had trouble getting out of the corner from across the ring earlier, too. Yeah, because they missed the call. The, the Irish whip. And Sullivan, but I think and, Sullivan was more interested in beating Cactus's ass than he was his opponent, so he didn't really make a big deal out of it. Yes. And then we keep going. So we then go to the Row Warriors versus Doom. And What's up, girl? To be honest, Doc, I don't know if you realize this. I kind of looked it up. Um... Jim Ross and Missy Hyatt throw us to the Warriors versus Doom, but there's only, according to the tape we have, three minutes of time left when they are thrown to it. So we're well into the match once we're thrown to it. Um, Look at Missy. Mm. Well, go ahead. I mean, you sound like you're over there, uh, you know, rubbing one out or something, Doc. Damn, she was a hot piece of ass, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Wow. That That came out of nowhere. (laughs) <laughs> I was trying to think of something nice to say, but Harper just kind of summed Bro, it up. That. Bro, like just, all those chicks on Baywatch that were hot back then, she could blow the doors off those motherfuckers. And she knew how to spread that hair out of the way and get mm-hmm. that dress and you see the crack of cleavage and just get it all going right. Dude, she was just beautiful. I mean, there's no other way. Yeah, yeah, dude. Was? What do you mean was? She still is. She looked better in 1990 than she does now. I'm not trying Come to insult on, her. Man. Father Time is undefeated. So what I was about to say was That's... the footage you're actually seeing here, whoever had this tape, they merged uh, what I believe is from NWA main event to the end of this show because this match got cut off on the episode of Saturday night. So what we're seeing here is actually what aired on main event and not Saturday night. 
which is fine. Um, anyway, Doc, did you have any thoughts on this? Um, can I get one sixteen fifty five? Yeah, we're working towards it right now. One six. Yeah, I'm still taking timestamps deep into the episode, pal. You watch it. Oh, there all. it is. Hold on, let me go back. That let me go back. Because animal pile drives Ron Simmons. Damn. He took it great. Yeah. Dude, he bounced off and everything. Yeah, that was Ooh. awesome. Yeah. Oh my. So Hawk gets tagged in. He comes in on fire. Uh, turns into all four guys. It's four way. All four guys fighting in the ring. Uh, Jim Ross then tells us it ended up in a double count out, so no one won. And um, yeah, that's all I got from this because it it ends before we get the the finish or whatever. Uh, Doc, any other thoughts as we wind things down on this episode with these two teams who beat the crap out of each other? That's what they're going to do is just sit there and throw rights on each other. And the crowd got up for this. I don't know where this was. They didn't bring the right ring apron. They're still in Little Rock. Oh, yeah. that's why there's I think no it's ring the apron. same building. Yeah. Yeah. This is Little Rock. Okay. Well, the crowd's up. That's one of those big chairs, too, that he just hit him with. Uh, the, the funny thing is, you know, this was the best thing we saw in this episode, and it's what it needed to be. Uh, the old saying, four big bastards beating on each other. What's wrong wrestling with that? Was, wrestling was yeah. great when it was like that. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. That's all Who we needed. Who was that running up day. forward? That was a referee? I think so. Uh, I thought that was Teddy Long, actually. Oh. They all look alike. Come on. I admit going former to referees and referees. Yeah, clean it up, pal. Yeah, that's Teddy Oh, it is right Teddy. Dude, yeah. Teddy. <laughs> don't hit me. Don't hit me. Was he missing teeth? Yes. Yeah. Oh, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You ain't ever known anybody to not have their full set of teeth? That's from drinking that well water. Wow. All right, Doc. So we need to, um, you know, rate it, Rolex it, all that stuff. So uh, before we do so, remember, become a patron, tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. We don't stuff this thing full of ads. We just provide content. And, dick. and yeah. even... Think about today, what you heard on this show. We got a run-in from Harper that what isn't expected. That's the type of thing we fill in our show with. No ads, just outlaw mud show shenanigans and old school wrestling. And if you appreciate that, go to tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT and get more great stuff along with uh, your helping to support this show. Also, don't forget, uh, we are... Well, I almost said we we're getting closer to the holidays, but we're still a few months away. Come on, bro, but don't, don't forget on to use your um, use our Amazon Associates link at tinyurl.com slash BTT Amazon. That's tinyurl.com slash BTT Amazon. A great way to support this show without spending anything extra. If you're already on Amazon, use that link and you can, you can support this show when you use it. Okay, uh, Doc, you go first. You want to rate it or Rolex? You tell me. Harper, when you get back to work, are you going to have to, like, put out displays for pumpkin spice rolling rock and shit? Oh, fuck. But that time's already, uh, that time is now. Oh. Great. Yeah, I mean, fuck, that, that shit's all out, man. Like, in the stores, the, the fucking Halloween costumes and shit. Oh. Okay. I mean, we're in, I mean, we're in September. Yeah, but it's, when we're recording this, it's early September. Anyway. Oh, have y'all been to Dirt Cheap? Y'all Dirt have those? Dirt Cheap. No. Dirty Deeds? No. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, it sounds like some bullshit South Texas crap. Yeah. We fucking... I, I wasn't there. I got two Saints pillows for like five bucks. Don't wash them. <laughs> yeah. Saints pillows. <laughs> Or they right. got one. They got one close to us, Mike. I I don't want to know about it, and I won't be Go going in there. there. Discount stores. See, financing available. Financing available. <laughs> what? <laughs> you pay forty percent interest on it. <laughs> yeah. By the time you buy it, after two months, you could have bought eight of them. <laughs> Meet Nick Soprano, our financing guy. 
Uh, it's, like, it's like that's like the old Frankie and Johnny's in in yeah. New Orleans, Hopper. I got the fifty dollars. Two hundred dollars dollar down. Get you in a brand new living room set, bedroom set today. I got the fifty bucks. You got to see the special man. Let her have it. Yeah. And the whole premise behind this furniture store. Yeah, you could get you a fresh new bedroom set. By the time you finish paying for it in five years, you could have bought ten bedroom sets. Yeah. Fuck. You didn't charge eighty percent interest on it. I was in the car with Latrell the other day, and he asked me what Rena Center was. Uh. Tell him that's a place where poor people go, or stupid people. Well, if you think wrestlers, if you're if you think wrestlers are carny, go to Rena Center and see how bad you get ripped off. Yeah, I just don't under like. Do you need that big ass TV that bad? Well, you can go to Walmart and get one that's like kind of halfway decent for like two hundred, three hundred dollars. Okay, so I wasn't aware that people still would get TVs because TVs are so cheap now. Right, but that's what I'm I think saying. of. I think of things like people do rent like washers and dryers, especially people that have apartments, like yeah. so that they don't have to deal with that. Like I, like that's the type of thing I think of, and you know they don't want to invest in you know, a thousand dollars or however much it costs for a washer and dryer. I ain't bought a washer and dryer forever. So I couldn't tell you, but like, I think of things like that And but yeah, I back in the day, $800 for his uh, dishwasher. Well, you know, doc's rich. He loves wasting the money. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what to tell what, you. What? <laughs> or Mrs. Doc does doc uh, w- w- rate it. Roll exit. What are we doing? What are we going? What are we going with here? C plus. Well, I'm B plus because Harper entertained the piss out of me with his yeah. running. Oh well, Harper gets an A. I exactly. get an A. I get exactly. the Rolex. Mm, Harper gets you, the Rolex. You give him Harper. Get one the, of those, I, I get one of those fake Rolexes. The guy at Trader get, Village. You get one of those Dookie chains, like the guys on the sideline of Miami when they make yeah. a good play. <laughs> Boy, you want hey, to look, talk about we got, something we that got played no out? Horseman this week. No real, the no main event superstars, except Harper doing a run in from Texas. I say that's going to get it. Well, in reality, Hawk was really good in his promo, so I, 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 you, you, you could give it to that. You could give it to Teddy for being a heel, saying y'all don't deserve an opportunity. I'm giving I mean, it to there. Harper, and I'm sticking with it. That's right. Okay. All right. Well, before uh, we get out of here, I do need to mention. Harper's video shout outs and life advice. He is still doing them. Harper, did you get that one out or the storm? Uh, I'm going to go. I mean, I got nothing to fucking do. So I'm yeah. probably going to do it uh, tomorrow. Because I mean, I mean, what else am I fucking doing? Cause did you guy... email him to tell him you were running behind? Yeah. Okay, good. And, and um, I'm going to fucking, I guess, go fucking tomorrow. Or pro- okay. What's tomorrow? Third. Bro, this storm has fucked up my whole life. Thursday. Bro, Thursday, I turned on the TV. And I was like, where's the college football at? I'm like, what? Bro, you're in another state wandering around. <laughs> no. I thought it was Saturday, <laughs> Thursday. I thought it was Saturday, bro. I'm I'm a I'ma tell you, I'm gonna let him tell the story. But this is uh this was, was what was messed up. Saturday he texted me and he's he's like, How do I find out if the Saints game is on out here? I said, well, you you go to this website. It's called 506sports.com, but you won't be able to look it up until the Wednesday before the game. He thought, now, again, this was last week, He the, the, the week of the LSU game uh, versus UCLA. He thought the Saints played the next day. He didn't realize the NFL was still a week away, and he's yeah, asking right. me about, well, so is the game going to be on? I was like, I was like, "Yeah, you are messed up. That's that's not till next week. The storm's got him messed up." He woke up on Thursday thinking it was Saturday and he was going to watch yeah. some college football. And then Saturday, he's thinking and the NFL is the next day, but it wasn't because uh, it was still a week away. Y'all got those uh, the Pete Stool and pianos by y'all? They exist, but yeah, I'm not a tourist of my own state, so I don't go to touristy shit. Yeah, but, yeah. I, I, I will, uh, me and Jarrett Wayne went out there Saturday, and that was some fucking. So, so that's like this sucks, man. It's like a uh, 
a corporate Pat O'Brien's without the personality or charisma. And all the douchebags in Cologne. And all the douchebags. It was White Claw Mania. It's all those fucking white bitches. I'm getting married, motherfucker. Yes. All on basic, stage. Oh, basic God. Karens in training. It's like stormtroopers of fucking white bras. They all looked and act the fucking same, bro. Kaylee spelled ten different ways. Yeah. Wait, your girl's not named Kaylee, is she? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was. I was like, what the fuck. And it was in some, like, business, like, a corporate building on the third floor. Like, there was, like, like offices around this. Like, it was in, like, downtown, downtown Houston. I was like, this place is a, it's a corporate bar. That's what it is. I was like, this is, this is garbage. It is and they garbage. got some, and some assholes, you know, they, they, they <laughs> did the devil fucking went down to Georgia or shit, right? And then, <laughs> The guy's playing a fiddle. I was like, I fucking looked over at Jared Wayne and I was like, that is not, that motherfucker is like playing the guitar hero fucking fiddle. There's Why no is he way. playing fiddle if you're in a piano bar? Because it was a devil went down to Georgia. Oh. And I was like, that dude ain't playing that fucking fiddle, bro. That dude, I was like, this is, I could do this shit. You should have just. You should have grabbed the bow, smacked him upside the head with it, and taken over. <laughs> I got the doc. I got the answer to keep Harper interested in, in 1990 WCW. Is it? Um, uh, we need him to tour various cities in Texas when he has time, because yeah. he's told 45 minutes worth of stories this week. <laughs> I feel like he's like the kid from the 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 country that went to the big city for the first yeah. time. <laughs> I'm like Bud. Yeah, but New Orleans, even Metairie, is not Spur. I've yeah. been to Metairie. I've been to New Orleans. Pasadena, I think, is bigger than than uh, New Orleans, right? Uh, we don't about... up here. We don't really consider Houston all that much. That's nice. Yeah, Houston might as well be in. I mean, in like, fucking New Mexico. No, that's no, that's the other way. Over, you could move Houston to Louisiana for all I care. Yeah, that's not true. Texans don't think that way. He thinks uh, that way. Uh, real Texans do. Houston is a, a big ass city, and the other thing yeah, too is when all. you say when you say how big New Orleans is, it depends. If you only consider the actual city limits of New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, yeah, that population is re- very low. But, but most you, people consider but if you it. Made, but if you made New Orleans in that area its own state. And put Houston in Louisiana and made that a state so that Houston's like the RVD of this new state. That'd be all right. I don't have a clue what the hell that's supposed to mean. But anyway, what I was about to say before we got another great story from Harper about uh, white. We need to send Harper to Austin. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, God. What I was about to say was don't forget to book your video shout out relationship advice. All that stuff. Uh, email Hopper, Chris Hopper 16 wildcat at gmail.com and then PayPal him CC 303 cc at yahoo.com to get your video shout out relationship advice. Maybe you want to curse a friend out. Hopper's your man. He could do that for you. If you just book him to get a video for you. Oh, uh, also, oh, go ahead. You know what else I found? Oh, I was driving around. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and it was just, it's just game room. I'm like, all right, a fucking arcade. And I drive by it. It says, like, open 24 hours, smokers welcomed, and it's all blacked out. And I'm like, what the fuck? And some some shady-looking Mexican dude opens up the door to let someone in, and it's all, like, video poker machines and, like, slot <laughs> machines. <laughs> and I was, I was like, No. That's, that's, a, big deal. that's right. a big deal here because all the poor states that surround us yeah. are trying to keep their gambling. Well, y'all don't have it's... gambling, right? Right. Not okay. yet. Jesus the, doesn't like it. The politicians haven't figured out how to line their pockets with it yet without going to hell. They'll figure it out. But, you know, anyway, politics freeze on, right? That goes for all politicians in this 
state. Uh, all right. So, again, Book Hopper video shout out. Chris Hopper 16 Wildcat at gmail.com is the email address to send your request. And then you got to make sure you PayPal him, cc30388cc at yahoo.com. That's his PayPal address. One other thing before we get out of here, or two other things. One, I want to mention our vantage point, the Retro Wrestling Podcast with Joe Murata and Michael Quinn, the northern version of BTT, slightly classier, a little bit more professional, but still fun nonetheless. They support us. Please support them. Give them a listen. And then check out the Bottom Line Cast with Mike Prue and JV. They do our ECW show on the Patreon feed, but they also do a show on the career of Stone Cold Steve Austin on their free feed called the Bottom Line Cast. Doc, I saw one other thing before uh, we shut this show down. Uh, the the graphic here, Lugar and the Horseman clash <laughs> next. What a, I miss he's got that. a what is it a German pistol or something? Jesus. <laughs> uh, by the way, that's, uh, and, that's oh my god, dude. <laughs> Lugar and the Horseman clash <laughs> next. What I believe Lugar. I believe Lugar in Spanish is place. Uh, place and the Horseman clash next. Jesus, uh, correct me on that if you, uh, or Jose Corona, shoot me an email if I'm incorrect. But I believe that stands for place. But anyway, they can't uh, spell Luger correctly because that's that. Uh, any other thoughts, Doc, before I throw it to Harper so we can get out of here? No, nah, man, let's get, let's get the fuck on out of here, man. All right, Harper, hit the tagline. Let's roll. Fuck it, bitch. Uh-huh.